Wrestling is unique in a lot of ways, and one of them certainly is that you have fans, viewers, the audience, customers, talking about television ratings to an unhealthy degree. And realistically, we pretty much all contribute to that, absolutely myself included. And it's weird. It's just really weird. It's something that we know where its roots come from, and that is during the height of the Monday Night Wars and the Attitude Era and trying to compare WWF and WCW, blah, 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 blah. But really weird that we do that, but we do. And it's part of the culture, it's part of the thing, and will continue to be so. And I think it is important sometimes to not overreact to one week's great ratings or one week's bad ratings. Like, that's some Dixie Carter shit right there, and you want to be better than that. That said, though, the ratings can be a reflection of the product that you put out there on a given week. And while certainly you're going to have the Meltzer Magoos of the world trying to spin it and say, Oh, they don't run live on the West Coast anymore at 8 p.m. They run live at 5 p.m. or whatever the fuck the excuse is. There are so many mental gymnastics when it comes to AEW. It's truly hard to keep track of all of them. Oh, they're showing live. Now it's on at 5 p.m. Just a bunch of shit. It's always something. But the reality is, as you look at the viewership numbers for this week's show, they were not great. Stop making freaking excuses for it. Because this show was not good. Like, I, as I sat there and watched this show, you know, I, I know I can be very prone and very easy to pick apart something. But I could certainly sense that the energy level, the vibe was just not the same. Even those that are very staunchly pro AEW, even those that are very adamantly like sheepish about the company, they were very tepid and very timid on Wednesday night. That's very, very telling. And it felt like a show where they were just kind of going through the motions. It really did. And there's a lot I could pick apart on the show, and frankly, I'm going to. Like Brian Danielson versus Alan Angels. Five, whatever the fuck. Who cares? I, mean, I get that you have a story here. He's working through the Dark Order to eventually get to Hangman Page. I get all that. The showdown between him and Hangman Page post-match was pretty good. But you got to stop having Brian Danielson wrestle every single week. You do it too much, where is the appeal? You do it too much, it loses that feeling of special. And I don't give a fuck how much you get a chubber for our greatest politician and the man who should be the next president of the United States and Brian Danielson 2024. This is not how you should be featuring him. He's supposed to be one of your biggest attractions. He's supposed to be one of your biggest deals. When you start featuring him more and more like he's a jag, just another guy, when he is clearly not, that's a problem. It doesn't mean you don't have him on TV most weeks. It means stop having him wrestle matches every fucking week. There are other ways to tell a story than with just a goddamn series of matches. It's kind of stupid. You got Miro talking about it. It sounds out of like to me he was going to finish what Vince started against God. Like, it's good in terms of demonstrating character depth for Miro. It's good for establishing and developing his skills. But where are you going with it? Like, that's the thing. Where are you going with it? You can say that about a lot of shit on the show this week. Lee Moriarty versus CM Punk. I don't give a shit. Be mad at me if you want. But CM Punk has no business wrestling Lee Moriarty here. There are other members of the inner, and not the inner circle, excuse me, the pinnacle. Isn't that their fucking name? They're still technically supposed to be a group. Like you have a Sean Spears, you have Wardlow, you have members of FTR. There are other people that make more sense here than having him just beat Lee Moriarty. Well, he got in, let Lee Moriarty get in a ton of offense. That's not good. Offense of Lee Moriarty, but he's not on fucking CM Punk's level. And nor should you be bringing CM Punk down to Lee Moriarty's level. Furthermore, Lee Moriarty should not have been wrestling CM Punk here. If you want to demonstrate what he could do, if you want him to get have people get behind him, then put him in another match against somebody else and maybe give him a win on TV. Like, it's just stupid. And as much as people might geek out about the post-match promo between Punk and MJF, I thought it was kind of fucking stupid, frankly. MJF making Britt Baker out to kind of be a sunny day's whore, which is totally stupid, totally uncalled for, 
and totally uncalled for because it doesn't make any fucking sense. You hear a lot about in basketball. I'm a Bulls fan, so when I watch Bulls games, Stacey King, one of the broadcasters, will talk about KYP, know your personnel. And in this case, it's KYA, not cover your ass spelled differently. It's know your audience. They know who CM Punk is. They know who he's with. They know who Britt Baker is. They know who she's with. Like, this isn't lowbrow shit by MJF. It's just fucking stupid. Like, even when I heard the cooking meth thing, I thought, well, crystal meth would have flowed better, and now you could have called him Crystal for fucking weeks, but you're going to be calling him Cooking? Like, it was off. It was like the low-brow, least common denominator bullshit, and it didn't work. It didn't. And sometimes that's going to happen. But let's not pretend like that was great, because it certainly wasn't. Like, punk outclassed him. Um, what was really weird about it is you come off of MJF talking all this shit, basically implying that Britt Baker was fucking around with CM Punk and MJF talking about he's going to fucking do something to the dog. Like, what are you going to pepper him? You going to pepper the dog? Feed it to CM Punk, you idiot. And as soon as you got done with MJF and the shit talking about Britt Baker, you go straight to a Britt Baker pre-taped interview where she doesn't address anything. First, why is MJF saying anything about this? Because Britt Baker has no logical connection here. Second, and here's a big thing, they're both supposed to be fucking heels. So why is one heel taking another heel and throwing him under the bus? It's just fucking stupid. And then you cut to this and she doesn't even address it. It makes you look Bush League. Stupid. Not as stupid as featuring Tony Nese like you are. Why? Why are you trying to make him a thing? What does he bring to the table that any other number of people on your roster don't? Like, if you want to give Lee Moriarty, I'm just throwing it out as an example. If you're going to put Lee Moriarty on the show, then why couldn't you instead have had him wrestle Sammy Guevara tonight for the TNT title? Yeah, maybe he loses, but there, you're not bringing down a CM Punk a level. It is really dumb. The Adam Cole Orange Cassidy face off was stupid. Wardlow was on the show wrestling, but it was against AC Adams. Why wouldn't he be wrestling CM Punk? Like, Stop defending this shit. This was terrible. It made no goddamn sense. Jericho and 2.0, why? So that way you could get to something that probably would be really good in Jericho and Eddie Kingston? Okay. But 2.0? Who gives a shit? Even the Gun Club versus Sting and Darby Allen's really weird. Sting gets the win, but it wasn't on Billy Gunn. Meanwhile, you're sitting there thinking to yourself, why is this a thing? If we're going to go there, let's just go Sting versus Billy Gunn one-on-one. -on -one. So that's what the fans want. Somebody decided to give Leo Rush a hot mic and apparently didn't do any bothering to ask, like, what are you actually going to talk about? And that segment between him and Taz was all types of fucking cringe. Like, whatever life or energy that was left in the crowd was killed. That was terrible. There were just lots of bad Bush League ass segments on this show this week. You know, the TBS tournament title match, or, you know, tournament match. Chris Statlander, Ruby Soho. Botch Lander versus Ruby. Oh, God. I'm sure people liked it because they did moves and it sucked. No, it, 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 compared to other shit on the show, it was actually pretty good, but that's not saying very much. But all the other stuff I could complain about, oh, boy. There ain't nothing like the fucking main event of this show. Golden shovel, the sledgehammers. Gonna show how pathetic I am by letting people live in my head forever. That should be long since in my goddamn rearview mirror. I'm gonna come out just like Homelander, try to set this hole up to main event in my hometown, thinking that my pathetic, insecure ass will actually get cheered and you get booed out of the fucking building for the most part. Dye your hair blonde looking like a bitch. Of course I gotta be talking about Cody fucking Rhodes. Who the hell else would I be talking about? Atlanta Street Fight. Andrade El Idolo versus Cody Rhodes. Of course Andrade was gonna lose this fucking match. <laughs> the crowd clearly wants you to go one way. So you're gonna Cody Cena then the other way. 
You're trying to do your best Cody H impersonation, and this shit doesn't fucking work. And then, of course, you get to the fucking founder mid-card piece of crap shit. In this match, that absolutely does not have enough story to necessitate an Atlanta street fight, but you're going to do it anyways because you're pathetically trying to make Cody feel good about himself. We're going to throw in a flaming table spot where Brandy comes in where she has absolutely nothing to fucking do with it. That is, you've spent most of the match trying to figure out what the fuck is that peeling shit on Cody Rhodes' back looking like he had a horrible sunburn in the tanning booth earlier in the goddamn day. You get to the big climactic spot for the surprise appearance by Brandy that makes no fucking sense for a story in a match that has a t flaming table spot where it wasn't required, where is it called for, wasn't needed, and doesn't make any goddamn sense. Just so that way, basically, you get to the big spot and Andrade delivers sliced bread to Cody Rhodes. Cody goes through the table entirely. Andrade really doesn't. And yet, somehow... Fucking Cody Rhodes gets the pinfall victory. You want to talk about founder shit? This is that founder shit. I'm going to bring in talent so that way I can bury them. I'm going to make sure that I'm in an event when I absolutely shouldn't be. I'm going to make sure there's all types of bullshit and overbooking in my fucking matches or extreme stipulations that are stupid. Because I want to be a mid-card piece of crap. I legitimately think that everybody should love me and does love me. All the while, I'm kind of accidentally pathetic in how much everybody hates me. And yet, I'm the only one that can't read the goddamn room. God, Cody Rhodes is fucking stupid. He sucks. His character fucking sucks. That match is stupid. If you like that, then you have no standards. And yeah, I'm going to say it. We're going to gatekeep here a little bit. Does that mean no fucking sense? Just because it's a street fight doesn't make it good. Like, have some god dang standards here. When you got more people mocking and shit talking, the big flaming table finish, you know you did something wrong here. This show didn't do well in the viewership numbers and ratings this week. And it didn't deserve it. They phoned it in, did a bunch of Bush League shit. The main event was a fucking popcorn fart. This company deserves your criticism for this show at least in this isolated bubble of this week. Because this sucked.